So today uh, we're looking at this new Antietam scenario uh, that I just created. We're going to talk about how you create scenarios and how you edit them. And uh, we're going to see how Mate 2.0, uh, the artificial intelligence, handles uh, this new scenario. So uh, this is the start of the scenario. And uh, we're playing red. The AI is playing blue. <coughs> and the first thing you can see is this is what we call uh, partial fog of war which is to say that what red can see is the sum of what all of its units can see. This is obviously not historically correct. Uh, I've talked about this before. There's full fog of war, and this is just what the commanders would see. As you can see, McClellan at uh, the Pry House actually had a pretty good view of the battlefield. I understand there was a powerful telescope up there as well. Uh, Lee, located uh, in Sharpsburg, really couldn't see anything of the battle. So. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to give some direct orders to units. Uh, one of the things I've noticed uh, about the Confederate Army is that its organization, its order of battle table, is not really conducive to giving core orders. Uh, here is the first core, and, and this is the route that all the couriers would have to take. Here's the, the second uh, core, and, th and that's all that we had at Antietam was two cores. Um, so what we're going to do instead, and I know how a lot of you guys are going to be playing this, is we're going to be giving direct orders to units. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to give a direct order to, to Walker. Now, as you can see, uh, these leadership values have already been set, and we're going to uh, probably change these during the, the course of our play test. I'm going to right-click on this unit, which means I want to move it in column formation. I'm going to move it uh, to right there, and uh, you can see that now, uh, couriers have been dispatched. Uh, you can see that's the red line. That's how long the couriers are going to take to get from uh, that uh, core headquarters uh, down to that brigade or down to that division. And we're going to select continue. And then we're going to left click to say that we want to change the line formation. And then left click again. And now we're going to dispatch the couriers. And here is the route that the courier is going to have to take to. Uh, go from the headquarters to that division and then for the division to move. So it's going to take about 25, no, it's going to take about, uh, it, it's uh, 545 to 625 is what it's going to take for that courier to, to do that and for that unit to start moving. Next, we're going to uh, order the artillery. We're going to just right click on that and then right click on it again and say courier. Again, check that. Yep, that's what we want it to do. Uh, we're going to go up direct orders. We're going to move uh, these guys now. We know now. Obviously, we know uh, where the key positions are on this battlefield, which is something we, of course, did. We know that this is going to bloody lane is going to be a very important part of this battle. Again, right click in, in uh, column formation, left click, and boom, it's in line formation. Also, uh, we'll send some artillery with that unit. Dispatch the courier, and then uh, last of all, uh, we've got these guys down here. The McClaw is just coming out of the battlefield, and we're going to, again, right-click, and send it right up there, boom, and then continue left, and dispatch the courier, and then uh, send this artillery as well. Now, you can see right here that the AI has already made all of its moves. And that's because the AI makes its moves while you're making your moves. So the AI cannot cheat at all. 
and uh, it's already made its moves. So let's take a look at what those uh, moves are and how the AI is perceiving this battle. So this is the log output of the AI. And uh, there's some key elements here we need to take a look at. The first of which is that the AI, as you can see in this statement right here, uh, it's prefaced by the three dots, which is the logical therefore. So it, it's looking at these premises and then it's coming to this conclusion. And the conclusion it comes to is it needs to occupy more victory points. Then it says, I need to aggressively attack victory points because it needs to take 65 percent of the victory points on the map that it doesn't have. Um, then it realizes that the enemy does not need to capture more victory points and therefore the enemy is going to be on the defensive. So what type of offensive plans should the AI make? Well, the first thing that the AI discovers is that neither side has exterior and interior lines. That means no side has an advantage there. Here's the biggie. The enemy's flanks are anchored, and the, the Battle of Antietam is a classic example of anchored flanks for, the, for red. So, mate knows that it cannot do a flank attack, it can't do an envelopment, it can't do any of the clever things it knows how to do. It's going to have to uh, brute force its way in. And so here, it starts making these decisions. The first decision it makes is it's going to hold the cavalry in reserve. It's waiting for a breakthrough, and then it's going to charge for the cavalry. Uh, it's looking at all these different battle groups. Battle groups are how Mate looks at it. These are basically cores, is what it is. These are all core structures. Uh, first core, second core, you can see them right down here. And uh, these are the objectives. Um, this core, is uh, for the I core, is, is being assigned to uh, Bloody Lane, for example. The I then starts cutting orders, or what we call course of action, COA. Uh, it noticed that it recognizes choke points. It recognizes the type of choke points. These are bridges. Uh, obviously, uh, some of these uh, bridges are, are very important to the game, uh, to the scenario. Obviously, Burnside's bridge is a big one. And it recognizes these choke points, and it knows how to handle them. And it starts by bringing artillery uh, up to uh, cover uh, these choke points. Okay, uh, we've now been joined by Franklin the Cat. Uh, let's see if I can get Frankie up on this printer. He hangs out here sometimes. Um, so we've looked at what the AI wants to do, uh, and now let's take a look at visually what the AI is going to do. This is a, a little visual debugging that I put in. So we can see uh, visually what the AI is going to be doing. Uh, you can see <laughs> the attack. Hey, Frankie. We can see uh, the first core's attack, which is actually very close to what really happened. Um, big difference here, we're going to see uh, the Union, the Blue Forces, make a push at the middle bridge, which McClellan never did. And then, also very important, you can see McClellan, uh, I'm sorry, we can see Burnside's uh, core moving against uh, Burnside's bridge, which is something that they didn't do until much, much later in the day. So this is a debugging tool, we'll just take that away. And now we're going to select enter and we're going to advance the time and yeah, nothing's going to happen because couriers are still moving. So we now have advanced time. It's uh, 620, which is turn seven. Um, there's about 40 seconds uh, per, between turns. That's not the AI as we discussed earlier. Uh, mostly that time is being used to move units, uh, calculate combat, which we're going to get into in a second, and uh, most of that time is actually used for uh, A-star algorithm, least weight path algorithm, because uh, every one of the units on the map, including the blue units you can't see, um, has to trace a path back to its headquarters. That's the courier path. That's the optimal path, and we have to calculate the time it takes for orders to be transmitted from the general headquarters to the core headquarters, from the core headquarters down to the local divisions and batteries. So that's where most of the time between turns uh, is, is used, and it's about 40 seconds, 45 seconds a turn. So now these are the reports, and now we can start seeing what's going on here. The AI handles all the combat. It fires the units for you. You do not 
just like Napoleon or Lee or McClellan did not go up to a particular battery and say, start firing. That's crazy. Uh, so that's all handled. And it's, and it's handled by leadership and morale and efficiency of the unit. So these are the reports that you as the commander are now getting. We don't know what the casualties are uh, that you're inflicting on blue. We can just see what you're doing as red. However, we, are, we can take a quick look at the combat log. So let's do that. So here's the combat log for the firing of those batteries that we just saw. Uh, you can see the unit, the strength, the quality of the unit, the morale of the unit, uh, the accuracy at 810 meters is 36.8%. Uh, we're going down all these uh, calculations and precisely calculating uh, what's firing uh, at the distance and, and uh, when they're kicking in. We're counting the casualties that the uh, units are receiving and uh, the effect on the morale. So this allows us to debug, allows me to debug and, and, and look at these units and we're saying, well, a battery is firing at 800 meters. Um, it's inflicting, you know, uh, 38 casualties. Does that sound reasonable? And, and the morale is going down three points. Does that sound reasonable? I think it does. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> we've advanced now. <laughs> And Frankie's come back. Um, now we're seeing, obviously, Union artillery. This is something that actually did not happen, of course, because uh, in, the, in the actual battle, because uh, the AI is much more aggressive um, than McClellan ever was. So now we're seeing counter battery fire. We're seeing casualties, and we're gonna. Uh, now we're gonna see. Uh, here's the first corps is beginning to advance. We're seeing the artillery moving up now. Okay, we've advanced to turn nine now, and we're beginning to see infantry fire now against uh, the first corps, the Union first corps, which is advancing. And we're beginning to see this assault now on, on the middle bridge, which, which never actually happened at all at the Battle of Antietam. We're up to turn 10 now. Uh, as you can see, the Confederate reinforcements are arriving. This is something that, you know, uh, we knew in advance. So that's why I sent these guys up there. Uh, same thing with uh, Walker. Same thing with these units that are now rushing through Sharpsburg. And we're seeing uh, melee combat now. Okay, we've advanced to turn 11, which is 6.40 a.m. now, and you can see the First Corps is now fully out of the cornfield. It's now fully exposed uh, to line of sight, 3D line of sight. We're seeing uh, melee fire and uh, units firing in the Bloody Lane area now, and we're seeing assault uh, now uh, coming down through through the Middle Bridge area. and. Uh, haven't seen anything yet uh, uh, over by Burnside's bridge, but we know that that attack is coming soon. So now we're seeing at turn 12, which is 6.45 a.m., uh, we're seeing Union troops being repulsed now in the Bloody Lane area uh, and, and uh, retreating back to their headquarters to recoup and rest. So let's take another look at our ongoing combat log. Uh, this allows me to uh, look at the results of all the combat equations and uh, do these numbers look good? Uh, in the words of an old accountant friend of mine, are these reasonable numbers? And we're looking here, we're watching, in this case, we're watching a Confederate artillery unit, uh, Major Scipio Pearson, I love that name. Uh, we can see that he is uh, receiving counter battery fire from up here, the 2nd Division Artillery, John Hopkins, uh, and we can see that uh, Scipio's morale just keeps on going down and down. Here's, here's an, a big hit. And uh, it finally just broke and, and ran. The same thing is happening um, on the other side, that uh, we're seeing uh, Union uh, units now um, retreat from melee combat. Up here in turn 11, we can see a blue commander initiative that uh, Ricketts uh, leadership was high enough that he has uh, changed his original 
attack orders, and he is now attacking uh, 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 an opportunity, uh, an attack of opportunity. All right, we've advanced now to 6.50 a.m., turn 13. Uh, the battle around Bloody Lane is really enveloping, is really is going on now. Uh, Middle Bridge is now under attack. Burnside's Bridge, uh, Burnside's uh, Corps is now storming in from that area. So I wanted to step back from the, uh, the game at this point. I want to take a look at the underlying data that's driving these scenarios. Uh, we're now in the Army Editor, and this is where users can create their own scenarios or edit order of battle tables that I've already created. So here we've got Lee, and he's set with a very high leadership value of 84. Uh, and then Longstreet is actually, I'd give him a bit higher leadership value. Let's take a look at McClaw. So this is one of the people that, that was just, we just gave orders to. Again, his leadership value, um, these are all like quality, morale. Um, oh, there's George. George is looking out the back window. George is seeing something very important right now. Okay, Whew, we're back. Uh, there's a senior citizen's retirement home right outside my window and one of the guy's dogs had gotten loose and George saw it and I just ran and captured it and I'm not as young as I used to be but uh, everybody's fine and uh, we're back to this video. Okay, so I was talking about uh, how to edit the order of battle table. Uh, McClellan I've set with a leadership of 37 which is very low because he was a terrible general. Uh, Hooker, yeah, okay, he was an okay corps commander. I gave him a 66. Um, I think these need to be brought up. Double Day was really good, and I don't like the way that those units broke, so I'm going to increase the morale. And then you just save it. Boop. And the next time we run that scenario, those units will have uh, those changes. Okay, so... Uh, when I went to uh, catch the neighbor's dog, um, I closed down the, the <laughs> simulation accidentally. So this is another one that's a, a saved simulation from turn 15. Um, one of the things I want to talk about real quickly, because we're debugging the AI here, some of the things I, I do like uh, about the AI is that it's aggressive. Um, let's uh, see what his plans are at this point. You can see now that uh, after it's, it's going to continue the attack from Burnside's Bridge, it's, it's going to move right in and it's going to go right into Sharpsburg. Uh, same thing in the Middle Bridge. I, I like the way that the AI is, is functioning. I like its overall strategic plans. It's doing a good job. What I don't like right now is you can see that uh, it's kind of leading uh, with some artillery here in the middle. I don't like that, obviously. We want the artillery to hold back. I have to. Uh, uh, rewrite some AI routines that'll keep the AI further back behind the infantry. It's kind of like moving your queen up too fast in, in uh, chess. But all in all, I think the AI is doing a great job. Okay, so I wanted to also show how the AI works with uh, uh, different scenarios. Here we have uh, the Battle of Nye. I'm sure I mispronounced it. Uh, part of the Hundred Days campaign right before the Battle of Waterloo. Again, we're commanding red. Uh, the AI is commanding blue. And uh, this is, uh, again, the partial fog of war. And I wanted to show how the AI with a different uh, battle, a different scenario, is, is responding differently. So this is what the AI's plan is here. Completely different than the original uh, plan uh, with, uh, at, the, at this battle. Uh, blue is attacking the flanks. Blue is always, uh, the AI is always going to attack your flanks. Okay, what I'd like to very briefly talk about now is uh, what I'm going to be doing with General Staff. So I'm going to uh, stop working on scenarios. I'm going to stop working on the AI. I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to learn the Steam install scripts, uh, how to write them, and I'm going to create install scripts uh, for Steam for the Army Editor the uh, map editor and uh, the scenario editor. So uh, as soon as I get those scripts ready, we're gonna upload that to uh, Steam and we're gonna get uh, Steam keys for all your early backers. And then you guys are gonna start creating more scenarios and we're gonna let the AI uh, figure out what it's gonna do with those scenarios. 
Thank you very much for watching, and thank you very much for backing General Staff Black Powder. <laughs>